So let's think about anatomy for a bit. Okay. So we are walking, we are running around. We have to think about the important muscles that help us do that. So when we are walking, the foot has to flex with the help of long and short flexors, which is flexor pollicis, flexor halicis longus, flexor halicis brevis. This is done to give the basic thrust with the help of the calf muscles, which is the soleus and gastrocnemius, which helps flex the knee. But it is not only the flexion of the foot and the knee, it is, we should also extend our knee. And that is done with the help of quadriceps femoris muscle. So when you are climbing up, we should be also using the hip, the spine, the shoulder, the elbow, the fingers. So let's talk about that next. Right. So when you are climbing up, we can think about what is the weight bearer of the body. So for that, in the hip, the hip bones such as ilium, pubis, ischium, they come in contact with the sacrum. So between the sacrum and the ilium, there is a sacroilial ligament and this bears the weight of the body. Also, you know, when we look at the foot, the foot, we don't just flex, it also has to help in the stability. It does that with the help of the lumbricals muscle. Not only the foot, even the hip has to help us stay stable, right? So for that, what are the muscles in the hip? Basically, the butt muscles, what do we know? We know the gluteus maximus, but it is not the only muscle over there. There is also the gluteus minimus, gluteus medius. Okay, so the gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, they help stabilize the pelvis when we are walking, prevent the hip from tilting too much so that we don't fall down. So when we are opening the drawer, the fingers come into action. So what about the finger muscles? So fingers, we think of the thumb separately. There is flexor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis brevis. And also, the thumb has to abduct with the help of abductor pollicis longus. So what about the other fingers? So the other fingers have to flex with the help of flexor digitorium profundus. So all this basically gives a precision grip. When we are writing, it is not only the fingers, the wrist also has to roll. For rolling of the wrist, also we depend on the flexor digitorium profundus, which is the bulkiest muscle in the forearm. Sound up ahead, so we're going to stop. Let's take a look. So when we are looking through the binocular, we can think about our vision, eyesight. So we have been given two eyes. So both the eyes together can help in determining the depth and also the distance. So we have to go over there. Okay. So the depth and distance perception, we can do that to up to 50 to 200 feet. Okay. Let's go. Okay. So we need a Opening the door handle, what happens? What do we do? We basically turn the handle by fingers and wrist coming into action. The wrist basically moves from a pronated position to a supinated position with the help of the supinator and the biceps muscle. Okay. How do we have this? So what is bong bong is basically marijuana. It is a drug that is abused, but it also has, you know, medicinal properties like say analgesic, anti-emetic, and also anti-inflammatory properties. But the euphoric effect, you know, the amotivational feeling is what people abuse. Okay, so let's pick up the tools. So when you pick up the tools, what happens? It's not only the fingers, elbow, it is also the shoulder. So coming to the shoulder, 
how does the shoulder flex? The shoulder flexes with the help of the anterior deltoid muscle and the chest muscle that is the pectoralis major. Okay. So, when we are opening the draw, it is not only flexion of the shoulder, it is also extension of the shoulder. So, extension of the shoulder is brought about by the triceps. So, flexion, extension of the shoulder, the elbow, the fingers. So, dirty clothes, we can not only think about bacteria, we can also think about parasites. We will come to that later. Okay, so when we are climbing down, the weight bearing is not only by the hip, but also the foot helps in bearing the weight. It does by the first metatarsal head under the big toe, basically. And also in the hands, you see the fingers are flexing, the thumb is flexed. With the help of flexor pollicis longus brevis and also slightly abducted. And what about the other fingers with the help of flexor distorium profundus? But the weight bearing is at the wrist with a muscle that is like the wrist band called as the pronator quadratus. Okay, so let's look at the elbow. So this elbow is right elbow is flexed by the biceps and the brachioradialis together and the other elbow is flex, uh, extended. The extension is by the triceps and this shoulder is flexed. So, for this flexion, it is the anterior deltoid muscle and the pectoralis major coming into action. It is not only flexion and extension of the shoulder, you see slight abduction in the right shoulder that is brought about by the deltoid and the supraspinatus. Okay. So, the flexion of the, I mean, the extension of the shoulder over here on the right side is by the triceps. Okay, going down. What about the weight bearing in the knee? So, weight bearing in the knee, we have, we are the, are wearing jeans and uh, we can think about the fascia that is covering the thigh muscles, basically the fascia lata. Now that, it actually gets tightened and it assists the knee in bearing the weight. So, all these muscles are acting together. So, when she is jumping down, the foot is basically taking up the thrust, right? So, that is the medial three toes acting together. Now, when we are duck walking, what happens? The gluteus maximus and the hamstring muscles are extending the hip and the knee, all right? And there is also simultaneous flexion of the knee and flexion of the foot. Put together, duck walking is a great exercise. So, we have seen so many muscles, right? Especially the muscles of the shoulder, muscles of the elbow, muscles of the fingers. Let's think about the innervation. It is innervated by different, different nerves. But the interesting thing is, the origin of all these nerves is from the neck, from the brachialis, brachial plexus. So, imagine an injury to the brachial plexus, what will happen? That brings to the end of this episode. Let's continue in the next one. Okay. So, we saw topics about how we stay physically active. Basically, the basic muscles involved in the foot, the knee the hip, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the finger and something about the visual field. So, coming to the questions. So, when we are walking, we depend on what? The flexion of the medial three toes, arching of the foot, plantar flexion of the ankle joint, all of the above. 
it's basically all those three so yeah all of the above so when we are climbing our thighs have to flex it does so by what with the help of gluteus maximus hamstring psoas major iliacus both c and d or all of the above it's basically psoas major and iliacus help flexing the thigh i forgot to talk about it when i was playing the game so i thought i'll update it over here gluteus maximus and a hamstring help in extending the hip joint so when we are standing for just some time so what takes the weight in the foot the heel the toe heel and pad of the toe or is it pads of the toes it's the heel so when we are standing for a long time like waiting in the queue then we have to shift the weight then pads of the toe come into play so when we fall from a height the strain has to be taken up by the foot what helps is it the gastrocnemius is it the soleus is it the flexor hallucis longus or is it the lumbricus it is the flexor hallucis longus the long flexor in the foot gastrocnemius and soleus are calf muscles so what is true about vision is it like one eye is sufficient to perceive distance and depth or both the eyes are required that too it goes to a maximum of 50 to 200 feet color is perceived by the cone cells of the retina lightness and darkness is perceived by the rod cells of the retina we need both the eyes to perceive depth and distance that to maximum of 50 to 200 feet and of course color is perceived by the cone cells and lightness and darkness is perceived by the rod cells of the retina we all know albert einstein he had a really good point regarding education so what he said was education is what you retain after you have forgotten everything that you have learned in school words to live by isn't it 